It's easy to hear your favorite artist on WFPK from wherever you are. Listen on your smart speaker, live stream from our website at WFPK.org from Louisville Public Media. Consequence Podcast Network. Hey, welcome to a bonus edition of Kyle Meredith with the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK Consequence and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thanks as always for making your way here and checking out this series. Uh, please hit the subscribe button wherever you're listening from. I put out three new interviews every single week, a new one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So it's a great way to keep up with your favorite artists, discover some new ones, know what's happening in the music world, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Acast, Podchaser, NPR, YouTube for the video versions, or again, any where you like to get your podcast from. I'm Kyle Meredith. As I was saying, today's a bonus edition as I've been uh, looking back through my vaults, trying to find uh, the, the, the interviews that uh, had never been uh, really put to the web, digitized, et cetera, et cetera. And today that stretches back to 2012 as I uh, discovered this interview that I did at Forecastle that year, Forecastle Festival here in Louisville, Kentucky, with John Stewart of the band Wilco, bass player for the band Wilco. And uh, it was catching up around the uh, the album that they had just released at that point, and and sort of diving into some of their um, the fun stuff like uh, some bus stories. Uh, they inherited a very um, uh, specific bus. I'll let him tell you about that. Uh, we talk about working with the changing lineups that they had early on, eclipsing eras. You know, Will Call's not really known as a 90s band or a, or a 2000s band, and of course their deep vault of music that uh, since this, uh, nearly 10 years ago, has only grown so much deeper. Uh, so I'll just uh, let this one roll, let you hear it for yourself. It's Kyle Meredith with Wilco's John Stewart. I'm well, how are you? Talking, it took a lot for you guys to get down here today. We're in uh, Louisville, Kentucky, the Forecastle Festival, and you had a bus breakdown already? Yeah, good old-fashioned bus breakdown on, yeah, on day one, on day zero, so... Uh, Hopefully we'll um, suss that suss that out before we <laughs> before we drive to the, the East Coast tonight. So we'll see how that goes. As so. the superstars now, that's not supposed to happen. It's uh, man, if you don't if you don't reserve your bus early in a summer touring schedule, you're you know you're you're sunk. You know you'll you'll get a you'll get like a six year old bus, and you know that's it's not a not a good place to be. So you know I you think ever, we learned our lesson. You ever arrive on a bus and be like, oh, this was Def Leppard's. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Or you know, or more like you know, like the hip hop world is not is not is not kind to buses either, you know. But yeah, or you know, it's true. It's yeah. We've we've actually um, we were a funny anecdote. Well, not a funny anecdote, but uh, uh, we were given the bus that um, Shannon Hoon had died on from Blind Melon. And they they just gave it directly to us afterwards. It was just, what ninety five or something, and you know we were like you know, obviously not high on the list of you know bands. It was like you know give it to Wilco, sort of thing. So that was pretty horrifying. I don't know how we found out about it. We got it out of the bus driver later in the tour. He's like, I was like, did you clean it up or anything? And it's like not really. So like whoa. This so is stuff they use in elementary schools and they probably you know, throw it on whatever the kid threw up. Or, you know whatever whatever Febreze or whatever <laughs> existed oh, at that point. Wow. So. You should got that story now, you know. Yeah, and you know, it, yeah. I'm sorry to lay it on you, but yeah. it's not. I mean, this is how we're going to start this. Yeah, it's uh, all uphill from here. Well, in lighter in lighter news, uh, congratulations on finding the only statue for a bass player in the history of the world. Oh yeah, yeah, cool man. What was that? That was on your Twitter. Yeah, yeah, it was on. Uh, it's 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 Phil Lynott in Dublin, you know, and and there are like tributes to Phil Lynott all over the place, you know, the great Thin Lizzy bass player, vocalist, and. And uh, but there are murals everywhere, and, and he's kind of deity there, and uh, but um, yeah, but someone someone brought up the fact there's got to be a, a, a McCartney statue somewhere. Less or even. Right. Yeah. Really. In his village, where you know, or whatever part of London he's from. See, bass players get a lot of slack, but you can just run down this list right here. No, it's true. I know. It's like becoming obvious. Yeah, it's becoming yeah, evident that we're not so uh, we're not such a downtrodden like sort of. <laughs> well, this is where I would say and we've got something for you I know I thought you were gonna un, 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 it's uh, made of butter yeah exactly <laughs> it's not ice today I'll tell you that much <laughs> there's something about Wilco right now that I don't think I'm the only one that's noticed this but you guys seem happy happier than, than ever uh, as a band and, and I don't know if that's uh, if you feel that well it's going on if you're thinking man I always feel good about it or, or if you can look back on it and see it at other times that 
those were dark periods. But there's something about when we look at Wilco right now, it, it looks like you guys are, I don't know, just kind of like you've made it to the good side of everything. Well, I mean, I think anybody, anybody in the business right now that has an audience, you know, that's sort of like doing well is just kind of, you know, just like can't believe their luck in a way. Coming through the, the heady 90, the early 90s and when it just seemed like record deals were growing on trees and money, you know, publishing deals were out everywhere, whatever. I mean, to, to kind of come out the other side, to see how bleak it's gotten for so many musicians that uh, that we that we love and respect and uh, we guys that can't make a living, you know, that are great songwriters or great players to, to, to be in a position where, you know, where we're making a living and, you know, and, 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 you know, you know, dare, dare I say prospering, whatever, uh, that you can't, you can't, um, you know, you, you, you can't, I kind of can't believe it, you know? So it's, it's a, but it's a good time for, it's always a good time for music. There's always something great going on, you know, the business side of it's tough, um, but it, it brings out, um, I think it, the the creams really risen to the top, you know, in these difficult times. And you guys have uh, you've had the. So I'm, I'm saying other. I'm saying new bands. Yeah, that's why I'm not speaking. Of You're making great records, yeah. and that's important. Uh, you've even had the same lineup for a little bit now, but over the years, you know, there, there's been um, lineup changes and everything. When that happens, and, and I know it's you know not always on on the good, best terms when it happens, but. Um, do you, do you take it as a, all right, now we can reinvent ourselves again, it's a, it's a breath of fresh air, or is it a hindrance? Like now, geez, these new guys have to learn every song. I mean, how does it end up shaking out? It, uh, live, it, it, it was difficult. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, having the same people, you know, around since 2004, you know, having, you know, you get this sort of symbiotic, you get this, you know, this sort of, this great communication on stage that you just can't, that it just takes three years to, to, to at least three years to sort of get. And we just never were in a position where we could really get a, get the get the groove on from a live standpoint. Um, obviously, there were, there were great, um, you know, great, Jeff was writing great material and they were like, you know, incredibly talented people in the band and uh, who, who were, you know, push, pushing everything. And um, it, it's, uh, it's, it, it, it has, it's been a, it's been a, a trip. It really has. It's been a trip, but it, it's, um, you know, it's uh, from a live standpoint, which is kind of where everything's happening nowadays, it seems. I mean, records haven't lost their, their value in any way, but to us, I mean, if anything, it's almost more, you know, we do it less than playing live, so it's almost more important at this point. But um, so it's, you know, it makes it easier, there's no doubt. But, and you know, the one thing about it is, uh, from I guess the way we see it, you guys have, have so many different sounds, and you know it seems like it's because of so many different musicians coming in and out. But on the top of that, you're not shackled down to anything either. It doesn't seem like there's one song you have to play every single show, and you know you're not just tied to this. You know, you're not a '90s band. You're not even a 2000 band. You're not you know really recognized for a single decade. Right. So even with that, it kind of feels like you guys can always go in any direction you want to. Yeah, it's it's you know it's to have the catalog that we have and. and and that, well, just to, you know, we, I don't know. It, we, we really had a, we were lucky enough to like kind of get a fan base in the night in in the nineties and, and at a time when some money was being spent, just to have this like sort of as, this nugget, of this little this little audience that that, that would, was kind of there for us for forever, you know, for a long time. And as the catalog has grown, it has it has um, it, it's also about the culture of the the about the shows you know that we we joke that the the people would kind of um they would kind of almost congregate whether we were playing or not or they would almost go it's some like micro version of the dead or, or fish or something they would they would go to another band or it's it's more about the communal experience for them and obviously the music's a big part of it but it's that's the the, reward, the rewarding part of it really ultimately is 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 there is those these people making sort of making us the focus of this like sort of this network they have it's funny you become the hub in a, there's a handful of those bands that exist out there and it's always my morning jacket obviously i mean i mean absolutely you know and uh it's it, you know an audience is just you know it's incredible you know I mean, it's just wonderful you know, people that are will roll with you you know and We've lost a lot of people, but we've seemingly gained more people over the years. So, 
um, you know, it's a miracle. The songwriting doesn't hurt. Um, and, and I actually heard that, uh, yeah, well, and you were in a frenzy, uh, the, the, the word songwriting frenzy, I know I, I've seen with this last record, you know, talking about, uh, I guess, Jeff and everything, but maybe the whole band in a songwriting frenzy. Is that still happening? I mean, did you come out of this with even more songs that you could say, geez, I've got another album there? Or or are you guys even thinking about that far ahead right now that you think, you know, we're still feeling good about it. Let's, how quick can we do this? I, uh, I, you know, we, we had a lot of, we had a lot of tunes, but not, not so many finished things that I felt we could get more than an EP. Maybe, you know, we had, we had an EP that came out that was, uh, uh, you know, I, I didn't. I didn't think there was a, a huge wealth of material, um, uh, but but everything we kind of knew what was sort of we knew what the record was going to be kind of early on, and uh, uh, but but it um, you know Jeff has always been prolific. I mean you know I mean we have so many different versions of, of every every song on Yankee Hotel Foxtrot, and and you know he he doesn't seem to be. Uh, slowing down, you know, anytime there's always a, a great wealth of ideas to, to work with live. It's very, it's fertile, you know, it's a very fertile environment, you know, and kind of what everybody in the band can do with it. And it's, 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 it's nice. We're going to get like the Dylan bootleg series uh, with the Wilco bootleg series in here. Kind of, I fear that. I'm afraid, <laughs> I, hopefully some, some, someone's archiving it, but uh, I hope, you know, uh, I mean, I, I've, I don't even have everything that I'd really want to have, you know, I like thinking back, but, uh, you know, hopefully someone's keeping track of it. John, thanks uh, for everything, uh, the entire catalog, your career, the whole of great record. It's a pleasure talking to you. And a big old thanks, John Stewart there, and a big thanks to you as well for listening. Do hit the subscribe button before you get out of here again so you can uh, keep up with all the interviews that we put out. Uh, new one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, three a week. At uh, all your favorite spots like iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Acast, Podchaser, NPR, YouTube for the video versions, or anywhere you get your podcasts from. After that, head over to WFPK.org, where I do a show Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern, an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, bonus interviews, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at WFPK.org. Consequence has your music and film news. You can also find me on the social media spots, uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all three of them, at Kyle Meredith. I do hope you like and follow along. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time. Consequence Podcast Network. It's easy to hear your favorite artist on WFPK from wherever you are. Listen on your smart speaker, live stream from our website at WFPK.org, from Louisville Public Media.